after Sigma Pi's removal from campus, how the university feels to pay them. Another new building, but this one could be paid for by you. Finals are almost here. See how working out could help your GPA. Your campus, your news, all those stories and more. Elon Local News starts right now. Welcome to Elon Local News. I'm Meredith Stutz. And I'm Justin Beagle. We start tonight with the continuing coverage on Elon Sigma Pi fraternity. Dean of Student Development Rex Waters says that it is up to the International Office of Sigma Pi to decide whether the current brothers will be granted alumni status. This comes after Sigma Pi International revoked the charter of Epsilon Theta's chapter at Elon last week. As for the men who were going through the rush process when the hazing investigation began, Dean Waters says it, is up, it will also be up to the International Office whether they will be given alumni status. Water says the con conversation on hazing needs to continue past this one case. We're going to continue to educate, and that's all we can do is uh, continue to communicate, educate, uh, and inform, and then where necessary, hold people accountable for their actions. Uh, the more transparency we have, the better. Dean Waters also said the university is working to find new housing for the 12 current men living in the Sigma Pi on-campus fraternity house. Waters says Sigma Pi's letters will come off the house before the semester is over, and the university will decide what to do with the house in the spring. Dean Waters says the ultimate goal of the fraternity would be to recolonize in the fall of 2017, pending on Sigma Pi's international's approval. 2017 would be the fraternity's 40th anniversary on campus. We reached out again to members of Elon Sigma Pi Epsilon Theta's chapter's Facebook group to get their side of the story, but no members have agreed to talk to us. Now, our Preston Willett checked into the university's Greek policies and procedures when it comes to hazing at Elon. Hazing is an honor code violation, and so um, that's how we would look at it regardless of the student group. Director of Greek Life Shanna Plasters uses Elon's honor code to define hazing as any activity that would interfere with a person's emotional, intellectual ability to perform academically regardless of their willingness to engage in it. Giving them a voice to, to really be able to communicate that to people, um, that, that to me is always a challenge. To prevent hazing, Assistant Director of Greek Life Jordan King says his office meets annually with every Greek organization to talk about what hazing is and how it relates to the recruitment process. A lot of that has to do with, um, with the fraternity itself, um, the history, the values, everything that's associated with being a member of that organization. While some fraternities and sororities may require their chapters to sign a hazing contract, Elon does things a little differently in order to make a real change. Signing a piece of paper isn't going to change someone's behavior. Certainly, and so I think that's why we've really focused on how can we hit multiple times on education. When Greek Life hears about possible hazing, the next step is bringing in the Office of Student Conduct. We take any allegation of it very seriously. While the Office of Student Conduct handles the punishments, the Office of Greek Life provides support for the students in need. Doesn't mean that we're going to defend them um, if they've done something wrong, but they need that, that piece, and we're here to help them navigate that process. Even with these procedures in place, Plasters believes there's an uphill battle when it comes to hazing. To stop hazing, you're really relying on those individuals with the least amount of power mm -hmm. to feel it empowered. The Office of Greek Life says if you witness hazing in any university organization, you can call the Elon Hazing Hotline at 336-278-HAYS. Preston Willett, Elon Local News. Well, that's how Greek Life handles evidence of hazing. Dean of Student Development Rex Waters stressed that hazing is not just an issue in Greek Life. It can happen in any organization. According to StopHazing.org, a group that works to prevent hazing through education, more than half of college students involved in clubs, teams, and organizations experience hazing. Also, according to StopHazing.org, nearly half of college students have experienced hazing prior to leaving high school. Now, you might have started your Monday with a little bit of a different shower than you're used to. Rain started early this morning and has gone through most of the day. Whew. After a chilly weekend, this rain wasn't cold enough to turn into snow, but that wasn't true for the rest of the country. Some states woke up to some snow. Take a look at my house in Cincinnati wow. and up in Maine to our director, Jacob LaPlante's garage. Oh, that's too cold. 
But is that the kind of weather headed to Elon in the next few days? Let's check in with ELN's Brooke Ravag outside to see what's in this week's forecast. Brooke, do I need to pull out my snow boots this week? Thanks, Meredith and Justin. Well, it doesn't look like the weather this week is going to be anywhere near freezing cold, but it looks like the beautiful 70 degree temperatures of last week are long gone. This weekend at Elon, we only got into a high of 56 degrees and reached as low as 28 degrees early Saturday morning. Today, even with the rain, the temperature was pretty pleasant with a high of 61 degrees. We are currently sitting at 54 degrees and the temperature is going to continue to drop into the night. It'll stay crisp tomorrow morning, starting your day out in the 30s. You'll still want a jacket. The sun will come out, though, and hopefully warm things up a little bit. You'll still want a jacket, though, because the highs on Tuesday and Wednesday are going to be in the upper 30s and lower 40s. It'll warm up as the week goes on, though, with highs in the 50s for Friday and Saturday. Uh, it'll still be, you'll still need a jacket, though. That's all the weather we have for you today. Meredith and Justin, back to you. Thanks, Brooke. With some chillier weather coming up, according to the Center for Carolinas, around 13,500 people in North Carolina are struggling to stay warm and are without a home. And in Alamance County alone, roughly 150 people are homeless. This week, it's National Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, and Elon's Campus Kitchen is doing its part to combat this issue. Going on right now, there's a hunger banquet in Upstairs Lakeside until 7.30. Tomorrow morning's College Coffee will have a focus on raising awareness for the homeless and hungry. Wednesday at 7.30 in La Rose Theater, there will be a Faces of Homelessness panel. Thursday will be a Habitat for Humanity build. And running out the week, Friday is the Turkey Trot. And Saturday, there will be another Habitat for Humanity build. For more information, contact Campus Kitchen at elon.edu. And if you're looking to volunteer at a homeless shelter, Allied Churches, located at 206 North Fisher Street in Burlington, provides meals, shelter, and job resources, among other services, to the poor in Alamance County. And Campus Kitchen, who is helping run Elon's Hunger Awareness Week, is another option to help out. Campus Kitchen, kitchen cooks, collects, and delivers food to those in need in Alamance County. Now, donating warm clothing is one of the biggest ways you can help during these cold winter months. And this Friday, Elon Professor Alec French asked people to do just that. With an event called Barbecue for Warm Clothing, French had the community over to the Mosley Kitchen for some good food and donation. French has been working with the Alamance County Ally Church's homeless shelter to help provide them with warm clothes for these cold winter months. French says he is pleased with some of the results from the barbecue and hopes for more donations. A few days the bins were empty, but as the word got out, it was really encouraging because uh, um, I, I checked on a bin in Campus Rec and wow, it was almost full. And uh, I'm storing some of those in my office now and I have a, just about a bin full. The warm clothing drive continues through November 21st. There are bins located all across campus for donations of coats, sweaters and blankets. This coming Thursday, Elon's Student Government Association will vote on whether they are going to help fund a new multi-purpose recreation facility in the Danieli Center. All Paul LeBlanc looked into how much money SGA might be spending and what it will be going towards. While construction will soon be wrapping up for the new admissions building, more construction is coming to the other side of campus. Dean of Student Life Smith Jackson says that the university is moving forward with building a new recreation center behind the Daniel Commons. We're telling SGA, unless you're a senior, you will use this facility. According to Jackson, the new center will cost $2.3 million to build. $1.9 million of that will come from the university, while Student Life has already contributed $300,000. Now the university is asking SGA to give the remaining 110000 The money will come from a reserve fund that SGA allocates to student organizations that does not end up getting used. You guys have rollover money, so it's not going to take away from anything that you're doing if you allocate this. You've got the highest accrued rollover in your history. First year SGA Senator Spencer Wagner will be one of the members to vote on whether the SGA will help fund the new building. This is a great time to really talk to the fellow students about how they feel and we love to be able to really represent what the students want. If the university gets enough money, the new facility will house a 1,200 square foot fitness center, two basketball courts, and will be big enough to hold large events. Jackson says that the facility has been a long time coming. We've not built a new gym, big space for students, in 30 years. 
Wagner says before they vote on Thursday, SGA wants to hear if this is something the student body wants. We want to get their perspective and make sure that we're really voting on what the students feel. Paul LeBlanc, Elon, Local News. Daniel Lee isn't the only place on campus getting a facelift. The public fundraising campaign for the new Elon School of Communications is officially one month in. Here with updates on the construction plans is our Megan Ford. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Justin. I spoke to the Dean of the School of Communications, Paul Parsons, who said out of the $15 million the school wants to raise, they've secured $8 million. Now, this is the same number from a month ago when the campaign started, but Parsons tells me that he's currently working on getting more donations. Parsons says the school is in a good position to raise the remaining $7 million over the next 14 months of public campaigning. So, if you do the math, that means the school needs to raise half a million dollars per month the school recently launched a new page on the Elon website mapping out what's to come in the new school. Here's a quick overview of some of the biggest changes. Altogether, when construction is complete, there will be five additional classrooms once renovated. Er, once renovated, McEwen will also have 21 editing suites compared to the 13 there are now. No plans have been finalized, but Parsons says there is a strong possibility that there will be an open computer lab for students to use during the day. Since one of the new buildings will be in McEwen's current parking lot, the dean says the plan is to add more parking near the tunnel on South Campus. Parsons says McEwen and Long Building, which will be part of the new communication school, will not be renovated until after construction on the new building, which is once it's complete, which he says will take about three years. It is important to remember none of these plans are finalized. Construction on the new school isn't projected to start until, until January 2016. Meredith, back to you. Thanks, Megan. According to the Institute for Access and Success, 7 out of 10 college students in the class of 2013 have some sort of student debt. The average graduate had about $29,000 worth of debt, and in six states, the average comes into more than $30,000. New Mexico was the only state where the average debt was less than $20,000. Students here in North Carolina have an average of around $24,000. The Institute of International Education ranks Elon as the number one university for study abroad in its 2014 Open Door Support release today. The ranking is based on the number of students we send abroad each year. According to the University of Communications, more than 400 students have gone overseas this fall semester, which is double the rate of students that have studied abroad five years ago. More than 700 students are currently registered to go abroad for January and winter term classes. Coming up after the break, feeling that finals crunch, you might want to hit the gym. We'll tell you why. $8,000. Find out why the senior acting majors need to raise that much and how they plan on doing it. What do the gym and your GPA have in common? Our Caroline Hartshorn looked into a connection that could potentially save your grade. With finals just weeks away, there's one building guaranteed to be packed, Belk Library. But during this stressful time, the library might not be the only place you want to go. There's a lot of research around the cognitive benefits of exercise, and some of that is around the ability to recall what you've studied. Department Chair of Health and Human Performances, Risa Walsh, believes that exercise and GPA are connected, and she's not the only one. In a recent article from USA Today, a study by Purdue University found undergraduates who visit the gym roughly 16 times a month, or every other day, had an average GPA of 3.2, a full 0.1 higher than those who didn't make it to the gym. There are a lot of things that are triggered in the body when a person is physically fit and or when they reach their target heart rate. And we think some of those things that are triggered are certainly related to the brain, recall, uh, following things from short-term memory to long-term memory. Some of Elon's active gym goers are feeling those effects. I never regret a workout. No one walks out of the gym being like, darn, I'm really sad that I just did that. Group exercise instructor, senior Bridget Creel, says getting active helps her de-stress and focus on schoolwork. I always feel amazing after, and it brings me a sense of focus, a sense of purpose. Creel says she even feels a difference when she skips the gym. On days I don't exercise are days that I'm lazy, so essentially that means that I don't feel like doing anything, and that goes with homework.
The next time you think you're about to hit the wall with studying, you might want to think about hitting the treadmill instead. Caroline Hartshorn, Elon Local News. And if working out isn't your thing, this might not help your GPA, but Bridget Creel will be stopping by Elon morning tomorrow with ways to eat healthy going into finals week. Tune in during College Coffee. Having problems printing on your on campus? Well, it might be your computer software. Campus Technology sent an email out last week telling students and staff not to download the Apple software update Yosemite. Campus Technologies believes that the update causes devices to lose their wireless printing capabilities on campus and tend to lose wireless internet access. The email stated that this was an Apple programming issue and not due to malfunctioning Elon University equipment. Today, Apple released another update on Yosemite, but it's unclear yet if the new update has fixed the problem. Coming up, a class act how one teacher's unique lesson plan performed this weekend. Investing in the future can be expensive. And for the BFA acting class of 2015, bringing in casting directors and agents to campus is not cheap. To raise money, the seniors held a showcase in the Black Box Theater this weekend. Our Brianna Eck was there and has the story. This is our chance to show everybody what we've done so far. Again? Why are you canceled? The class of 2015 used this performance to raise money to bring casting directors and acting agents to Elon in the spring. Those connections in this industry are everything. That's how you get work is um, people knowing your name. The showcase was free, but donations were accepted. They also sold baked goods to raise money, but a big source of their fundraising is from their Indiegogo crowdfunding website. We could raise a certain amount by ourselves, but we, we know that we needed the majority of our funding to come from people who donated. They decided to make their fundraising website a little more personal and created a film to introduce themselves to their donors. I wanted our video for sure to be high quality. I wanted it to have a hook in the beginning and I wanted it to be more about, we'll show you what we can do before you help us. Of their $8,000 goal, the seniors have raised more than $3,800 so far and they hope to get even more before the spring. We're going to let our Indiegogo run its course, and then from there, if we need, you know, to further examine different ways to um, make money, uh, there's, there's ideas that we haven't, you know, gone through with yet. While they are working on their fundraising goals, they are also working on sharpening their skills before graduating in May. We've been working on um, finding monologues and scenes that fit our type, so things that we could actually play in the real world. Brianna Eck, Elon Local News. And the seniors weren't the only ones to hit the stage this weekend. After a semester of training, the class of 2018 held their first showcase. The first years were asked to pick either a monologue or a scene to perform. Their upper class and mentors helped coach them through the process and directed the show. Now just across the street from Studio A, the BA majors were also putting on a show. Our Gary Grumbeck has that story. You will laugh and you will cry. The BA Acting 2 class is performing nine scenes in a funeral, a completely original production that was written, cast, and choreographed by Bachelor of Arts theater students. Lulu learned yoga pants because regular yoga pants just aren't enough. Professor Chip Johnson says the originality of this production is what makes this different from other performances the theater department puts on throughout the year. This is all comes from these students and, uh, and I think it's something they can be proud of. Sophomore actress Courtney McMasters says the class is nothing like anything she's ever experienced. I think it was really cool because we all expanded on our acting and our writing and our, I think that was a really cool aspect of this class. McMasters thinks it's the people in her class that help make the hours of rehearsal worth it. Some of us are, have been doing writing and some of us haven't, so I think just learning each other's strengths and weaknesses and working off of that has been an awesome experience. As for what can be expected from the play... There's a big dynamic. Um, there's some, you know, really funny ones and there's some um, that are very emotional that come from people's background and come from their families um, and what they've been through. A class creating an original performance 
where students are getting more than just a grade. Gary Grumbach, Elon Local News. Coming up after the break, we'll take you inside the games. Today, the Elon men's soccer season officially came to a close. Earlier this afternoon, the Phoenix were not selected to participate in the NCAA tournament. Elon head coach Chris Little believed his team had a shot at an at-large bid after the Phoenix fell 2-0 to Northeastern in the CAA quarterfinals. The Phoenix entered the day ranked 42nd in the RPI standings. The men's soccer team now s says goodbye to the winningest senior class in school history. Though Elon soccer may be staying home, senior cross-country runner Luis Vargas will continue his historic season after another victory this weekend. Vargas finished first out of 231 runners at the NCAA Southeast Regional Championships, finishing the 10-kilometer race in 30 minutes and 5 seconds. He becomes the first runner in Elon history to qualify for the NCAA Cross Country National Championships, coming up this Saturday in Indiana. Basketball tipped off the season with a women's men's doubleheader Friday night. First, we'll start with the women who took on Anderson University. The Phoenix started the game out strong, jumping ahead by 10 points, but Anderson would not give up. When it looked like things were starting to go Elon's way, the Trojans repeatedly clawed their way back into the game. Freshman Shea Burnett led the way for the Phoenix with six points in the final three minutes for an Elon 77-72 win. The women finished off the weekend beating Navy on Sunday 69-56. Following the ceremony, the men's team went up against Florida Atlantic University. After falling down by 10, just 12 minutes in, something clicked for Elon. The Phoenix, led by sophomore Luke Eddy, who was filling in for an injured Austin Hamilton, stormed back with a renewed energy, chipping away at the deficit until Elon took the lead for good with just not under nine minutes to go. Junior Tony Sabato, who spent most of the past two years backing up graduated Lucas Troutman, scored 14 points, adding to Elon's 64-58 win. They've worked really hard. You're not guaranteed the victory. And um, it didn't look great in the first half, and they kept playing. And um, we won. And then you go in the locker room and you hear and see the joy, and that's, that's the fun part. Sunday, the men's team took to the court again, this time against UNC Charlotte. From the opening tip, the Phoenix were outmatched as the 49ers grabbed the game's first 11 rebounds and shot 50% from the field. Elon struggled throughout the contest, making just 32% of its shots and shooting only 15% from three-point range. After trailing by double digits most of the game, Elon pulled within three but couldn't steal the win as Charlotte left with a 73-60 victory. The Elon football team returned to Road Stadium Saturday to host the main Black Bears in its final home game of the year. It was also the annual Military Appreciation Game. Before kickoff on Sunday, Elon honored its 12 seniors. The Phoenix started early with scoring when Adrian McClendon intercepted a pass and returned it 30 yards for a touchdown. That was Elon's first first-half touchdown since September 20th, but the celebrations came to a halt when Maine made an eight-minute march down the field that resulted in a touchdown. Maine ended up taking that game 24 to 17, and that's all we have for sports. Meredith and Justin, back to you. Thank you, Andrew. We would like to take a moment to congratulate some of our own. Three Elon Local News alumni were recognized at the Radio Television Dig Digital News Association of the Carolinas this weekend. Former News Director Joe Bruno was awarded the D. Haney Howell Student Journalist of the Year Award. Former Jeff Ackerman was recognized for student producing, and former producer Steve Roth won Producer of the Year for his work at WECT. Congratulations to all of our ELN alumni. That's all we have for you for ELON Local News. We hope to see you back tomorrow morning for ELN for ELN Morning when it goes live during College Coffee. Follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash ELON Local News or on Twitter at ELON Local News. Have a great week, ELON.